today is we're going to vote on a proposed slate of candidates for the new LMB board. And um, this has been an adventure for us. And, you know, God, God is the leader of the church, and he started on, on, on this journey to policy governance. And along the way, he's brought a lot of gifts to this church. And to get to this current position that we're at right now, there was a lot of work from a lot of people, and we want to acknowledge some of that today. So about a year and a half ago, over a year ago, I should say, I'm not quite sure when, but the LMT started the process. Um, and with their work, we selected our coach, who is Jim Galvin. So thanks to George and Dean and Dave and Kathy for their work on this. <laughs> then in October of last year when uh, Jim Galvin came down here, we formed the transition team um, and developed a plan that would bring policy governance to ILC. The transition team had 17 members in it and they worked in four different committees um, to develop the program. So. Again, we'd like to greatly thank that team of 17 people for the work that they've done. So thank you. <laughs> so over the past six months, I guess, we've uh, the, the work of the transition team has been presented to you in both uh, um, e-letters and in town hall presentations. And we thank, again, we thank all of you, the members up here who um, participated and um, for your attention and the feedback that um, to these efforts um, through the work of the L of the transition team and and the feedback that you gave us we were able to develop a revised whoops, whoops, a revised constitution and bylaws that was approved by 90 over 93 percent of the people in the congregation so Thank you much for that. So once again, we thank everybody for your support. We're confident that this change in governance will enhance our church and keep us on the mission path, path that God has led us. So I'm going to ask Dean Kochenauer now to come up, and he's going to open the meeting with prayer. Dean. Thank you, Bruce. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we give you many thanks for the blessings you have bestowed upon this congregation. We look around the room and give joy and thanks for the members who come out in support of the purpose and mission of our congregation. We rejoice and give thanks for the members who have graciously submitted themselves to the Leadership Ministry Board that will continue in providing guidance for our church as we continue our mission of knowing and sharing the joy of salvation through Jesus Christ. Be with this meeting today, be with all the members as we conclude and depart and enable us safe journeys home. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you, Dean. And that brings us to our program for today, our objective, which is voting on the slate of candidates. Um, we've asked Dave Grant to go through the nomination process, then present the candidate list um, to you. Then there'll be a time for questions as part of the nomination process, and then we will have a prayer and a vote. So, Dean, uh, Dave, you want to take over? Be glad to have Dean take over. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Too many D's. Too many D's. Looking around, it seems like only yesterday that uh, we had a lot of little children jumping around for uh, VBS. And I mentioned to uh, where Steve back there, maybe you should put up one of the uh, songs to get everybody exercised and their heart rate flowing here before we start. I think Bruce presented you with a great overview of where we were. Um, I would back us up a little bit just to remind you from a, a perspective standpoint uh, where we uh, came from. Uh, if you remember not too long ago before the pandemic, we had a council form of government. 
uh, which consisted of uh, many of you are familiar with it consisted anywhere from 12 to 15 people and uh, when the pandemic came we switched to uh, an executive form of government with three people pastor the head elder and the president of the congregation basically running the affairs of the church out of uh, because of the pandemic and some of the changes that we had to make and uh, you know for my opinion or slot uh, i think less is more was the motto at that point it was we were able to cut through some of the bureaucracy and get things done and and during that time we also uh, did a lot of studying and we had time to take a look at different forms of governance from a board standpoint and that's where we began to narrow it down and look at policy governments and we use various tools uh, references and uh, we began to talk about uh, using a coach and Jim you know Jim Galvin was mentioned so we went to executive governments which uh, was the leadership ministry team which was five people and uh, now we're proposing and this will be the last step that you vote on the slate of candidates approve the slate of candidates for leadership ministry board and um, what I would say is as I go through this, I'm going to give you some information. It'll be on the board, uh, the screen, and I'll also verbally give it to you. I would ask you to take notes. I'm not going to field questions. Um, what I mean by that is during the presentation. After we have a motion and a second, we'll, during the discussion, you'll be able to ask your questions and give input. Uh, so I would suggest that you either take notes uh, on your piece of paper or on a piece of paper or mentally just file it until I'm done with the presentation. So as Bruce said, October of uh, 2022, we met with our coach, Jim Galvin. Uh, he gave us uh, an overview and trained us and took a look at uh, what policy government was. We had roughly 40 to 50 people attending that. And from that, the transition team that Bruce mentioned was formed. Uh, trans trans <laughs> the transition team was uh, then moved forward with different uh, assignments. We had a communication team, and it was led by an LMT member. Uh, that team was read, led, led by Kathy Besty. Uh, we had the uh, presentation team, and that was led by myself. We had the Constitution, which was revised, led by George Clausen, and the nomination team or committee, which was led by Bruce. So that, uh, what I'd like to do now is just give you a, a closer look at the process that was followed. And I will make a comment that uh, I went through the whole process and later on decided to uh, withdraw my uh, nomination self-nomination so so the microphone fell down but, uh, so i've got a good idea of what went on through these different steps so the process itself was the nominating committee of three people which was bruce um it was uh, lonnie and greg bestie um, we, they put together, and I'll get into more detail, the self-nomination process for everyone that was interested. Uh, we had training, and I'll address that, a pastoral conversation, and then the slate was approved and created by the uh, LMT, the leadership ministry team. So, I did that my magic. The nominating committee, we had, uh, Again, the three members from the transition team, uh, they established uh, qualifications for the LMB members, and uh, they did that uh, on their own, but also canvassed other individuals. Can everyone hear me? I canvassed other individuals. To... Thank you. They canvassed individuals in the congregation. Uh, they also talked with the elders. Uh, the staff and the LMT. Uh, they created a self-nomination form, again, uh, with input from others, and established a process 
to determine those potential members who would be interested in the leadership ministry board so that process self nomination process the team received the potential candidates based on the qualifications that were set forth there's a if anyone's interested with the qualifications with the quote thank you John can't get much tighter it's a sheet that's simply self nomination form it was available here at the church or in some of the communications that went out it's got the qualifications and then basically an application to be turned in and reviewed by the team so they received those and they reached out to by my count approximately 24 different candidates that were there male and female candidates so the candidate training that was referenced was done by pastor Zimmerman and he reviewed what the responsibilities of the team would be if they were elected he conducted three training sessions and out of those candidates nine candidates were trained and one is still pending because he's out of town and when he returns he'll be trained so I guess first of all I'd like to I'll make some comments but I'd like to thank pastor Zimmerman if you would stand up briefly I know for you know just just for not only doing the training but everything he does to support Island Lutheran Church we're blessed with some retired clergymen and they really based on their experience and wisdom they have been willing to serve and volunteer to help us out as we move forward with various different things teaching preaching pastoral care and now training as far as you know my takeaways from the training personally is you know what is the board responsibility as opposed to what we've been doing and it's really a couple things really to connect with the Lord's will and in particular here as our ILC family try to determine God's will for us as a church congregation for our community itself God's will for the community make sure we're adhering to knowing and sharing the joy of salvation our mission statement and really continuing to be Christ centered and grounded on the word they will have one employee who is our lead pastor and they also wish to make sure that the church is operating efficiently that ministries are being carried forth within budget and we continue to grow as we've been blessed to do so I would again the next stage was the pastoral conversation so each individual candidate they met with pastor Jeff that discussion was biblical leadership spiritual well-being as well as the ILC mission statement maybe everybody should help me state that knowing and sharing the joy of salvation through Jesus Christ so the LMT selected the slate of candidates and you should just be aware that the slate of candidates had two people that one person was self nominated and the other had a spouse that was self nominating so at that meeting they were asked to recuse themselves so myself George and Dean Kokenauer along with pastor were the ones that voted on that pastor does not allowed to vote 
So the vote between the three of us was unanimous to accept this slate of candidates. So communication then, uh, you've seen it a couple times already before this meeting, if you've read your emails. So the slate of candidates and their backgrounds, uh, I'm not gonna go over the individual backgrounds for all those candidates. You have a chance to see that. Um, and again, I was one of those. Uh, when it came down to the choice, uh, the Constitution said we can have up to seven board members, leadership ministry board members. And you remember we had 10 candidates, three of the candidates, one being myself, pulled his, uh, his nomination, my nomination, as well as the other two, voluntarily, uh, after this, this whole process. Um, that's not any indictment on the process, but uh, it's just uh, where, we, where I think I fit personally in the congregation and where my skills uh, and gifts are. So that leaves us with seven, so we could go up to seven, so it, didn't, it wasn't a long discussion. We already had seven people that wanted to do it So at this point in time. So Jeff, I really want to thank you too for helping us not only do the uh, pastoral conversations, but for all you do for the church and your experience with policy government, as well as your networking with other congregation and bringing us uh, into the 20th century with, with board governance. So Jeff, thank you. So the candidates, and not everyone is here, but if the candidates would stand up, I'd appreciate that so that people can see faces with, and the name, Greg Bessie, Andrew is not here, Lonnie Goulet is here, Alan Myers already stood up once, Alan Ponsini is not here, Bruce Rosenthal, and Neil Springer is still in the Chicago area. So how about a hand for them? So the slate of seven candidates uh, will determine four officer positions, four positions, and that's president, vice president, recording secretary, and treasurer. Uh, that makes us comply with three, uh, for what is the 5013C uh, requirements for nonprofits. So those will be the officers. The other three individuals will be at large. And that those seven people will determine who does what at that point in time. So I know I said I'm not gonna fill any questions, but I am going to ask for a motion. And what I would like to hear, I need a motion to approve this slate of candidates as submitted or if you want to uh, have a motion for the alternative, that's up to you. So I'd like a motion to approve the slate of candidate as George. So did everyone hear that? George made a motion to approve the slate of candidates as submitted for leadership ministry board. Does anyone like to, would anyone like to second? Ed? I'd like to second that motion. Okay, Ed seconded the motion. So what I would ask now is if the uh, slate, and if you're on the slate of candidates and your spouse is if you could take a little bit of a break, so they're gonna recuse themselves, and then we'll have a chance to uh, openly have any questions and <laughs> talk about uh, ideas and the slate, but not, not personalities. We're gonna talk about any questions you have about the process, next steps. Uh, Pastor Jeff and Pastor Zimmerman will be here if you, there's questions about, I, I know what I went through is a lot of information and hopefully uh, now is the time to dig into more detail with any questions and someone, I think Jack, Jack will be around with a, uh, a microphone. All I would ask now is, since the motion is on the floor, is that it, when you speak, you're either speaking in favor of the motion 
or you're opposing the motion against the motion or if you have a specific question but we want to keep it from a robert to rules of order questions are pertinent to the discussion that we're having today which is basically to approve the slate of candidates okay bruce So I have a question about the process once again. Um, the exact positions, um, president, vice president, recording secretary, and treasurer, and the three at large positions, those will be determined by the group internally? Or did somebody say, I want to be an at large only? Well, the, the, I don't that, have to. Yeah, Jeff will answer the question further because he's got more experience with it. But my understanding is the, the group will decide internally and that's the way it, it is being done and by our coach and in other, uh, <laughs> sorry about that, in, in other uh, LCMS churches as well as, as part of policy governance here. So Jeff. Important question, thanks for asking it. Uh, a couple of things that we uh, are going to learn are the distinctions between a council, which is the Abden model, uh, and then policy governance, which is the Carver model. One of the distinctions is specifically to this. Um, most of us grew up with the Abden model where you elected a congregational president, correct? Or if you were at a social organization, uh, a community organization, you would elect the community president. Um, but um, in policy governance, uh, the, the distinctions are different. You do not have a congregational president. You have either a chairman or a president of the board. This is very important distinction because the board speaks with one voice and any one person historically in a Abden model the council model, who's up front at every congregational meeting? The president. That will not be the case necessarily going forward because the board works together and determines together who is the best person to present and answer questions. And so it's a very di distinct, the person is the president of the board, is the vice president, the secretary, the treasurer of the board. And so therefore they will elect They've, um, in my conversations, pastoral conversations, people started sharing things with me. Um, if you're welcome to set up a time with me, I had the same five questions for all individuals. We went through a, the same path, and then I gave them a chance to ask questions, and some of that came up in that, in that part too, Bruce. Is that helpful? Yeah, so everybody So when you, agreed to be nominated and be on the slate, you agreed to participate in whatever capacity the group thinks you're best qualified to do? Couldn't say it better. Okay. Got a question right here. Mary. How did we determine that it would be seven people? Just, I mean, based on past experience and our coaches' advice, it was seven people. You know, remember we came from five, so we came from roughly 14 down to three, down to five, and now we're at seven. So the experience shows that seven is a good number. It's a good biblical number. <laughs> That's good for a church. Does that satisfy your question? That was a good question. Okay, thank you. Next. Hey, my name's Ed, and I just want to say that uh, I couldn't see a better list of candidates here. I'm very encouraged by the participation that we've got for these volunteers with uh, the, the job that's in front of them, and I'm just really encouraged and happy that uh, we've got this kind of leadership emerging, and, and thank you, Dave, for all that you've done. Uh, you're welcome.
Jeff, what, what's M Mike? Mike, this is Mike. This yeah, is Jeff, Mike. what's the process if someone can't fill out their term of replacing? Are we stuck with seven, or you go down to six, or do you have like a new selection process if yeah. someone can't fulfill their term? Yeah, it's it's. Uh, thanks, Mike. It, it's laid out in the bylaws, and it would be done by the leadership ministry board themselves the, the, by appointment at that time. Right now, they're right now the terms are going to be uh, staggered, and they'll draw straws or determine a method for that when they meet together. Uh, the terms will be one and a half or two and a half years to begin with. That half is because we're in the middle of the year now and when they take over it'll be, and, and eventually we want to get to every, at the end of the year when we present the budgets. From now on? From now on. And then from now on it'll be three year terms, which is what is outlined in the bylaws. But uh, in order to uh, accommodate our situation, and again, we've got great leaders. Uh, you can give the numbers guy, Dean Kokenauer, credit for that one. He said, why don't we do one and a half and two and a half year terms so, yeah. for the first time? We've got Carolyn over there. Jack. What happens to the elders? Well, uh, the elder uh, job description, so to speak, when the Constitution was rewritten is uh, basically a duplicate of what had gone on in the past. But they're now the spiritual ministry team. And that's the new name for the elders. But the elders' functions are the same. Now, you'll see some changes on who's on the spiritual ministry team because you notice that some of the elders are on the leadership ministry board or may be doing other functions in the church, so they may become inactive. But the, uh, the tasks, if you want to call it that, the ministry of the elders will continue at Island Lutheran Church. So if, if you want to look at the, the bylaws, I have a copy of them here with me, and we can go over that, Carolyn. And, but thanks for the question. Jet, oh, of course. Kind of exciting. Um, uh, think about this. Neil Springer, Greg Bestie, um, both elders who uh, felt that they should be moving forward. Um, Dave went through the process. He decided to step away from it. Since this, the Constitution and bylaws were adopted, um, we've had no less than five people come to me and say, hey, I have an interest to work on this, minis this ministry team. I want us to think about all of these. We, we talk about boards, and I understand we're all captive to our old history, but we're talking not about board work. We're talking about ministry teams. And so there will continue, like Dave said, the very function. In fact, we expect it to get bigger. We expect the, what was the elders to probably be close to nine or ten people uh, within the next year. So it's very exciting. Great question. Any, anything else? So for the people that are virtually voting, we have John and Billy fielding calls. So I'm going to call the question if there's no other discussion so if you would fill out your board your vote for the leadership ministry board and you're voting for all those candidates as one slate uh, while we're doing that I'm going to ask Pastor Kevin to pray for us Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our time together today, and we thank you that you're uh, teaching us so much about uh, our church and, and what you've called us to do, and we ask that you teach us uh, continually how to be the church that you've called us to be, and we thank you for this process that, that we're on as we continue to grow together in faith, 
and uh, within our community as well. And so please bless us as we continue to know and share the joy of salvation through Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, that by your spirit, you're guiding us. In Jesus' name, amen. If uh, one person from each table would pick up the votes and bring them up here, they'd appreciate it. Hey, what I would uh, what I would like you to do is undoubtedly, um, as you're going through this voting process, maybe you have something you want to share with the people around you at your table. So why don't you just use a couple of minutes to talk, and then I want to have just a, a couple of closing comments, um, and uh, we'll announce the results. Um, but so just take a moment with the people at your table. Maybe there was something you felt like you wanted to ask, but you didn't feel like it was okay, tell the people around you, and maybe they'll give you the courage to ask it for you. Have at it. actually improved though it's a lot better okay no no he and i talked we just okay. talked recently yeah it's a lot better yeah yeah okay um you talk about we we neither of us were elected to go to synodical um you're, you're if you're talking about we 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 don't get um representatives I, let's deal with that at another point. So, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. This sir, the circ, you, you have a. Um, let me powwow with you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, um, this is really good to see the interaction. I am just very, very, very encouraged. And. Um, I'm sure all of you are having important conversations, like the Cubs beat the Cardinals nine to one last night, yesterday. Yeah, I'm sure that's all a part of your, but if I could um, just for a moment um, bring you back. All right. Thank you for looking up here and uh, as, as my, my wife is real good at, eyes up here open, mouths closed. So, all right, here we go. Um, so I, I, I want you to know as someone who uh, has been watching this from three and a half years ago, just a little perspective from the new guy who came in. Do you know, um, I remember when the conversations went on when we were under the, the council model and there was some frustration about the organization and then there were the steps and, uh, and then the president and the head elder and I, because we had a council that could not meet. Would, it was heavy time during COVID, even in this space. And, uh, and yet people continued to work. And, um, and I remember one of the voters meetings, um, and I, I don't want to embarrass her, but I actually remember Mary Moore saying in front of everybody, well, it sounds like we're going to end up with policy governance. Why don't we just go to it right now? Do you remember saying that, Mary? Three years ago, does anybody else remember Mary saying that? I, I remember it because I was like feeling very awkward because if it would, co it would come to a vote then, I would have voted no. We were not ready. In order to, uh, for this organizational structure to work, and by the way, any governance structure can be uh, messed up very easily. 
corruption can come because of you know inappropriate behavior or misuse of authority or confusing behavior but there's other parts that have got to happen that we probably take for granted and uh, in order for this to work for me I need to be protected to be able to to pray and preach and teach and care and uh, do the things that I went to seminary for and we were not ready back then we are now it's a very different time uh, and I can tell you um, what excites me um, is that uh, some of you are going to learn uh, over time as you ask questions there's basically a line the Lord is on both sides the Lord is in the people but the strategic work which I've said over and over again, I'm happy to participate in the process of strategic work, pray with you, but do not look for me to be, you know, Moses, divine word to come on high. God will, God will surface that through the conversations. These people, we have, I had numerous people who couldn't be here who walked out of church last week and said, man, do we have a great slate of candidates. I mean, I heard it over and over again. That, that's important. These people are prayerful. They're grounded in the word. They understand organizational leadership. But something else has been happening, and that's the below the line. And I, again, I don't want to pick on anybody, but I'm looking right at Mrs. Tigner here. And Mrs. Tigner said, you know, she was one of the people who said, we really have to work better on getting our job descriptions and the organization and and you talked you know we talked about some of our ministries and we don't need to get into them right now but what's happened is we have leadership in different areas that have been very helpful so that now sharing the joy ministries kevin is working on and some exciting things are happening in those ministries the area of financial ministry and campus ministry, which reported up to the vice president and the treasurer, now has to report up to me. And I was so grateful when God raised up Bill Anton to come forward and said, hey, I will, I will take on financial ministries. And when God raised up Ron Olick, who said, I'll take on campus ministries. And quite candidly, I look at them as staff people. They are staff. They are, their remuneration is different than other people's remuneration. But Ron's got a little office. He, he's got a, uh, he has a budget. He has oversight for ministry teams for campus ministry he's putting together. Similarly, Bill Anton has all these ideas for financial ministry. They're staff. Why do you say, what is that? I'm gonna go back around three and a half years ago, we weren't ready. We could have never taken the step without having it burdened. Now we have Pastor Kevin and we have Grace and we have Gladys and we have Steve and we have Michelle and we have all these other people that are leading ministry areas. And it's a great, great, great time. And, and, uh, and so I just want you to know it's exciting because today I, I voted yes. I voted yes when the Constitution and bylaws because I believe in it. And I believe we're making the steps forward. So I think we're going to close in prayer, but before we do, I think Dave's got the vote. Do you? I do. All right. I do, but first of all, I, I, there was one comment that I forgot to make when I, uh, during my presentation, and, and it came out when someone was voting. And, you know, people would like to see more women, and we, I would like to see more women in leadership as well. I believe the team canvassed uh, roughly five women, and uh, you know they were people were not willing to serve at this time. But in the future, there's always op opportunities, and I think that our ideal discussion was that having at least two women on the team. So, so the vote uh, we had 99 people vote, 97 voted yay, two voted nay. So that's a good, so I'd like to congratulate the candidates. That's a good record. And, and God bless them all. And Pastor? Uh, just a, a little aside on the gals. Would you help me? Um, we've teased her a lot. She's worth like 10 women. 
Um, uh, but will you help me uh, thank God that Lonnie did allow her name to stand, Lonnie Goulet. As <laughs> And, uh, and I, I can tell you there were five women, and I see you sitting in here. So, um, you know, it's time. For, we just have to let the Lord's timing work out. We had all the women in the congregation also have opportunity to self-nominate. So we'll, we'll just pray when it's right. The names will come forward. But for right now, it looks like the Lord has given us, um, fascinatingly, uh, a mixture of guys and gals, but also on island and off island. Or maybe I should say mainland and island. <laughs> um, we also have people that have been here less than five years and people that have been here more than five years. So it looks like a really good mixture. And so I, I'm personally very, very grateful to that. The people that are not here today, it should not be a reflection uh, on their value and priority. Uh, Neil is in, in Illinois. Uh, he is undergoing some uh, treatment and care. He's doing fine. He'll be back. Janet, and if she gets away from the grandkids, they'll be back real soon. <laughs> Alan Ponsini would have been here, but Alan Ponsini's mother um, had a tremendous turn for the worst, entered in hospice, and they are, um, they are up in New Jersey. They left suddenly, um, so that's why Chris wasn't here as the head of the, did Pastor Kevin say he had a hard week? That's because Chris Ponsini, the head of VBS, had to leave. But it all worked out. So Alan would have been here. And um, it just so happens that yesterday was uh, um, Andrew Bazelli's birthday, and they had planned a big trip for their, his birthday months and months ago. And so he and Debbie are out of, out of state. And so I believe those three, the other four, I believe are here. So, the uh, month of July is a transition month. Uh, the coach is going to be coming down over the next two months to meet with leaders of our church. Please keep your ears open and watch the e-letters. The, uh, uh, the LMT has graciously agreed to have a meeting on the 9th of July to give a six month update on where things are at in the ministries of the church. And so please be, uh, if you're in town, please be here for that. It'll be their last formal meeting with the congregation. And, and as Bruce said, we owe them a debt of gratitude for their hard work over the last couple of years. Lord, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Mr. Chair, President, I'll let Bruce close the meeting. All right. Um, thank you for, oh, for coming again. Uh, this is a great turnout. I, I was kind of questioning how many people are going to turn out in today, and I know there's a lot of traveling going on and a lot of visitors and everything like that, so we appreciate your taking the time to come here and, and work with us. So um, if there is any other questions or comments, I will adjourn the meeting. Make motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn by George and a lot of seconds out there. So <laughs> meetings adjourned.